Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today, I'm gonna do something I don't normally do, and that is respond to somebody else's video. Uh, MI Gardener, Luke over there said that you should not start your garden with like a bagged potting mix or bagged soil, and I disagree with him. Let's get busy. I believe that people should be able to grow healthy fruits and vegetables in their home garden, in their orchard. Um, and because of that, that's what has driven this whole channel. All of the things that I'm showing are, are trying to make it easier and accessible for the home gardener and the home orchardist. <laughs> Here we are, you don't often see our little veggie garden and flower garden. I've kind of let Michelle take this over <laughs> in a lot of respects. Also the kids, we've got these little, little pots here lining the way and they're growing different things and experimenting and trying. You know, if you're like me, um, I'd love to get it right the first time out, but sometimes you learn um, as you go. And so that's kind of what we're doing, happy about that. As I've kind of taken a little bit of a backseat to what's going on in this garden, um, and you see we've got some beautiful stuff growing there. We had these beautiful zinnias there that are going. Some dahlias are there, look how beautiful. You see the gigantic kale back there that's totally going, and of course you can't miss those beautiful uh, sunflowers. As I've learned about soil and I've learned about nutrients and things that make a garden or any type of plant thrive, um, I took issue, a bit of issue with Luke from MI Gardener's uh, video and where he talks about the most recent one was to don't use a bagged thing, a bagged soil or potting mix or garden soil from your big box store in starting your garden. And I heard that and I thought, okay, I don't actually agree. He's got such a wonderful channel. How many amazing videos he's got on there and uh, really a wealth of information, but I thought this might be a little bit off. And here's, here are a couple of things that he said that I wasn't on board with totally. Um, first of all, some of the things that I was on board with, you know, when he talked about the different types of soils that there are, like getting a, um, a top soil, and what that's comprised of. You know, topsoil is just dirt. It's kind of like, honestly, like this stuff right here that's like this, whatever this mole is grabbing up from our yard. This is largely just dirt. It's like tiny, tiny pieces of rocks and it's devoid of organic material. And so nothing's gonna really wanna grow in something like that. He's right about that. Um, he also talks a little bit about uh, like a potting mix specifically. In a potting mix, this is where we start to kind of diverge a bit um, because he says, well, that a potting mix has, or it doesn't have that much organic material in it. It's got things like peat moss. Um, and oftentimes they'll put in like vermiculite or perlite, which are those little pebbles. You see those little white puffed rocks. And the main reason for those, um, more than it just being an inexpensive filler, is that first of all, vermiculite and perlite are not inexpensive. They are rather pricey, they can be. Um, but the reason that those things are added to a potting soil is because a pot needs to be able to retain water in a way the garden soil doesn't need to. You've heard me talk a whole lot recently about how um, any type of plant that you have in a pot or a closed system is more sensitive. And so what those things do is they, without sogging the soil down, they allow some moisture retention to happen um, and some airiness to happen without uh, bogging down the soil with a lot of moisture. That way the plants are able to get and kind of grab and derive some moisture when they need it. And so those are really important components, uh, especially if you're gonna be planting in some sort of container or a, a pot of any kind. So I'm a fan of potting mix. And the idea that it's not full of um, organic material, uh, I'm gonna get to that in a second, but I wanna show you this, uh, this potting mix. Well, it's not even really an official potting mix because you wouldn't put potting mix in the ground. Um, this raised bed and potting mix, uh, I got this for a specific reason, using um, Mel Bartholomew's square foot gardening was what was the inspiration for all of this. And the idea was having a light airy mix um, that you're, you're going for light and airy over uh, heavy and nutrient dense. And uh, I'll explain what, that, what that's about in a second. But look at this potting mix. If you look at the ingredients here, 
Okay, so the ingredients in terms of organic materials, let me get out of the sun so you can see me. Oh, you can't even see this. So this is made by Kellogg, and this is a local Southern California brand. Um, it's got this, you know, here's that black soil he's talking about. This has been sitting out here for a while. It's just not moist, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't look entirely like it. But, you know, the first ingredient here, recycled forest products. Um, dehydrated poultry manure, composted poultry manure, hydrolyzed feather meal, kelp meal, worm castings, and bat guano. Those things are, make up eight of the, pea moss is like the eighth thing down. Perlite is the third. And so what you're seeing here is a type of soil product. And you notice that there are lots of different sizes in there. And um, all of those little white rocks, you see that there's a bunch of different wood products and things. This is where, this is my main point of departure is that it, it, just saying flat out, don't get a bag product because you wanna just plant in straight compost. Um, I just don't, I don't buy it because that comes with a ton of organic material. Another reason why I think that I disagree with Luke on this one is that anything you put in the soil, any kind of soil you put down, you're going to have to refresh with organic material. That organic material is gonna break down, it's gonna wash out, it's gonna be used up, the worms are gonna eat their fill, and you're gonna to have to put in more organic material. And that's true whether you start with a bagged uh, soil like that, or if you go in and have your buddy go out into the country and bring back a beautiful load of, um, you know, a pickup full of <laughs> some sort of compost. So the idea here is that any kind of soil that you have is going to eventually need refreshing with organic material whether it be fill, refilling with compost once you've got this initial base. Okay, well this is more of my approach is to use this potting mix first and then come in with something like this amend over here. And the amend that they have is far more um, organic material. You know, it's more of a compost that you come in and you amend your soil after it's already there. Once you've got a good base of the other stuff, that airy, uh, perlite, vermiculite, and peat moss. You can do that, or you can come through with like a, a liquid fertilizer. We use a couple of uh, fish emulsion type fertilizers that uh, work pretty well for us. We have them sitting over here out of the sun. Look at this, fish fertilizer, 511. This one, 01010 for the flowers to give really huge blooms. Also really good for um, stuff that you root like potatoes and that kind of stuff. Things where you want the tuber to grow really well in the soil. You're gonna wanna always be adding organic material back into your soil. Um, and that's true whether you started out with a compost or started out with a, uh, a bagged soil. One other thing to consider is that Using a, using a mix like the one that I have, in a raised bed especially, is gonna do a few things for you. So the stuff that's gonna break down and disappear from those three, if there are three main things in a raised bed mix, there's organic material, there's perlite, which are those little rocks, and there's peat moss. The peat moss is not gonna break down in the same way that the organic material will, and the perlite or vermiculite, those little puffed rocks, are not gonna break down. So the thing that's getting used up by those plants and is getting broken down is that organic material. So you don't have to keep going out and buying bags of that stuff in particular. Once you've got your garden established, then go out and just grab some more compost and put that in the soil. Okay, here's like my final reason why I think that Luke's a little bit off on this one, and that is this. When you're starting a garden, you need it to be easy. Most people are not gonna start something because they feel overwhelmed, they feel worried that it's not gonna work out for them. And starting out with a bagged mix is a wonderful way to get started. Yes, you're gonna have to go and add more to it. Yes, you're gonna have to uh, continue to bring organic material into it. But to get started, going out and buying a couple of large bags is a wonderful way to get started. It's very accessible. You can take and throw it in your trunk. You don't have to arrange for a pickup. And for me, being a busy guy, that type of stuff, it makes that a whole lot more accessible. I take my pickup out. I go and get mulch, you know, for the, like, the roses in the front, for example. I went and got this really nice uh, wood chip 
um, for those things. So I have no aversion to going and doing that. But, but for somebody who's wanting to start a garden, I don't see any problem with having a light, airy solution as long as, here's the caveat, as long as you recognize you're going to have to put organic material back into that soil one way or another, whether it's adding it, you know, uh, like fish emulsion, which is kind of very fast acting, doesn't stay in there a long time, or adding compost, starting your own compost pile. That's that kind of stuff can take a little while to get up to speed. So for the person who's starting, I think that uh, the bag stuff is really good. Sorry, Luke, much respect, my friend, but on this one, I, I'm not with you 100%. I know the dangers you're talking about, but I'm not with you 100%. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this? What have you seen work well in your garden? I know that in our garden, um, if anything, just trying to make this easier has meant, you know, having a drip system and some other stuff uh, and, it, and maybe not being on top of the feeding as often as we ought to be. And that's, that's something to be said, um, but that would be true whether we started with compost or not. Anyway, appreciate you tuning into this episode of The Busy Gardener where we talked through a little bit about uh, the kind of soil to put in your garden, especially if you're starting out. And so, yeah, I appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love for you to do it. If that's your thing, if not, that's okay too. Hey, um, hit the like button because that makes me feel oh so good. Whether you've got uh, one type of soil in your garden or 500, until next time, stay busy. Mm -hmm.